What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of the Aquatic Adventure of the Last Human. The signboard actually says something different right now because I'm actually fascinated by the story in this game. I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna read it once it restarts because I didn't realize that this cycles through different messages. Most polluted city in the world now healthy because of the Osiris project or purification project process. Okay. I'm trying to get ahead of myself right now because I don't want to... It's one of those weird things. Whenever I do a series, sometimes I don't want to spend too much time like looking at random ancillary stuff in the background. But this game is so much about ambiance that you kind of feel like you have... It's like the water just turned into pee. Or I guess I'll call it chicken noodle broth. That's a little bit less... Fine. I'll be a little bit less... Puerile? Is that the word? Puerile? Hmm. I think that's the word that I'm looking for. Sophomoric. There, that works too. So, welcome to the kelp forest. This area is filled with all kinds of weird umbilical structures and things that can probably cause you lots and lots of harm. Watch out for these things right here. They almost one-shot your ship. You gotta be careful about it when they strike you. Although that one back there looked like it bounced off of me, so maybe I don't know anything about anything. I think this is where we needed to go. This right here is looking- yep, this is it. Okay. So, welcome to the Aquatic Adventure of the Last Human. This is our next boss! I think it's the brothers or something like that? The fathers. The proud stallions of the sea. Nay, say I. I shall slay you, great creature. Oh my god. So basically they shotgun their young at you, which can be actually kind of worrying. You want to fight them from the top down, but you've also got to give them a little bit of range. If you get too close to them, they will injure you and you will get whooped on. So my recommendation would be to do stuff like that. I would focus on one father first. That would be my advice. I, it took me a number of times to beat this boss. They're not difficult, but it can be more difficult if you split your damage equally between the two of them. Also be careful because on occasion they do that right there, which knocks you backwards into the clams. And since we lack the repair capabilities that I would like to have at this point in the game, it can be a little bit risky. Now at this point, they're going to spawn a bunch of these other seahorses. You've just got to watch out for those. It, there's a chance they may try to... Oh, nope. Uh... I doubled back and that was very, very foolish of me. This fight requires you to stay in constant motion, so try to do it. This fight is only difficult until you kill the first father. And then once the first father goes down, you're perfectly fine. It's just the fight is difficult up until- oh, really? I gotta start way back here? That's weird. Why did that happen? Normally it lets you start in the room- hmm, there's a dead plane right there. Well, here, I normally- that's very, very strange. I wonder if it's just because the save point is so close it's going to force me to go back. I'm not really sure. That's weird though. Normally it spawns you inside the room where you just started to fight the boss again. So that you can do multiple attempts without like really ruining your life. I guess I'll focus on the left father. I think is what I'm going to do for right now. Just be aware this fight can go horribly, horribly wrong. Especially when Splattercat's doing it. That's my advice right there, that you kind of do like an S formation above them. Strike who you can, just be aware that they share health. So unfortunately, it can be a bit of a problem for you. Ooh, he tried to get us right there. He tried real, real hard. But he's gonna fail. He's gonna fail. I'm gonna double back now. And hopefully we can get a couple more hits off. I'm gonna swoop inside his fire right there. And we should have a horse down real, real soon. Like, yeah, we got him. There we go. He's dead. So now we got to focus on the other one, but the fight is going to get a little bit more intense. However, you want to fight this guy. If you kill the one on the left first, you want to fight this one from the left because it means he's got a longer shot to put you against the wall into the clams. So don't fight him from the right once you've killed the left seahorse. Or if you kill the right seahorse first, you want to fight the left seahorse from the right. And I know this is kind of confusing and arbitrary here, but... Just trying to make a point for the way that I prefer to fight him. I had to remember my strategy. It's been a couple hours since I fought him last. And I knew I had a strategy that defeated him. I just couldn't remember what it was. We're doing really, really well right now. You'll notice the difficulty of the fight goes down pretty explan or exponentially once you get rid of the first seahorse. And then once you've just got the other one, it's kind of just like an endurance match. You just got to see if you can finish him off. These little guys act as a shield, which can make it a little bit difficult to finish, but... It's not that bad. If there's one thing I know I can accomplish here, it's finishing this fight. In addition, his other seahorse is going to act like a shield for him, which can be problematic. Oh, we got him. Cool. So we added that to our creature log. The father is now dead, and there is a giant chainsaw that we may now use to destroy our foes. Nope, doesn't destroy foes. 
it cuts through seaweed, and that's pretty much the only thing that it does. The first thing I tried, being a Warhammer 40k fan, is I tried to attack an enemy with it, because I thought, Chain sword for the front of my submarine! Float me closer, I want to hit him with my sword. But nope, didn't work out like that. You should always check boss rooms after you're done here, for secret rooms. They've done it to me multiple times now, where they've punished me. Well, not punished you, you don't lose anything for not searching. It's just that there's a secret inside the boss room that will unlock something later on, or maybe it gives you like a cool piece of loot or something like that. So for example, like right there is what I'm talking about. I think that's the room that we were in though that we couldn't get past the sewage. You know that false wall that I went through? I think that's it. Let's go back up to the top, and that means we can now do a lot more exploration. I like how they float to the top of the water. It's little attention to detail like that, like those random little things that developers put into games that really help you with the immersion. And you don't notice them unless you play a lot of games and you end up reviewing games and stuff like that. It's just one of those little things that you take for granted. Like, you might notice it for a second, but you don't mention it to anybody. When it comes to a playthrough, I like to mention it. Ow. That was wounding. Oh, shit. Oh, that one only goes up halfway, I guess, because there's no... Does that actually kill it? I was gonna say, I felt like it probably reopens. That's fine. We could use a few more hull upgrades. There's a lot of hull upgrades up towards the surface of the water, if I recall correctly from my last time playing, so I'm gonna head that way and see if maybe I can make myself a tad more resilient before we start going after some of the nastier bosses. This is the main point of the game where you now have the choice to go after like two or three different bosses. I would recommend not doing the Parasite right now. The Parasite, you guys haven't seen it, so don't worry about it, but the Parasite is kind of out of your league right now. You can go after, there's one called the Forgotten One. You can go after, I would do the Forgotten One next. You can do the Forgotten One, and then after the Forgotten One, I might do the Tranquil. Or maybe I might do... There's another one that I'm forgetting right now. Waste. There were once great forests that covered the surface world. They gave us life, and we wiped our asses with it. Wiped our asses with the trees? Seems kind of painful. I don't think I've ever wiped my ass with a tree before. You need a really, really small tree, like one of those little ones that you get at, like, Target around Christmas time. And then you'd have to hold it by, like, the trunk, and then just, like, get it in there. And it seems like there would still be a big risk of like a malfunction and like wounding yourself. There's nothing right here, is there? Although there was seaweed back here, right? Yeah, there it is. Let's go ahead and saw that seaweed. And we got a harpoon charge speed upgrade. That means we're actually gonna char- it does exactly what it sounds like. I was gonna explain it and be all in depth about it, but it does exactly what it sounds like. I'm forgetting a boss right now. What boss am I forgetting? I think the forgotten one gives you- there, there's a little dash that you can do, kind of. It's like a little dash charge. And then... Ooh, hey, what's going on? Oh, we got a whole repair speed upgrade. That's really, really good. That's fantastic, actually. That'll help out a ton, because that means it won't be quite so punishing when we go up against bosses. We might be able to kite for a little while and just try to keep them from wounding us too badly. I'm thinking... Oof, almost ate that one to the side of the head. This game was definitely not what I expected when I first started playing. There's a tank right there. It's like some kind of large robot. I don't know if it's like a military robot, but it's kind of terrifying looking. I'm going to go through to right here. Go through to right there. And I think I'm going to try and get to this area over here. Oh, shit. Okay, that got a little rowdy. What does that do? Oh, he's constantly hitting it. Oh. That's very interesting. I wonder what that does. Or maybe when he hits it, it opens his gate? Oh, it does. Okay, so... I guess that was exactly where it needed to be. I thought maybe if I stopped it from shooting, it would unlock something, but it doesn't appear to be a mandatory part of the process. What's up in here? Okay, so we got some more destroyed stone on that side, which actually looks very, very structurally. What the hell is that? A floating sea urchin of some kind. No way! How did I not notice that the last time I was here? That was super awesome! What? Alright, here, we gotta blow a bigger hole in it. I can't get through. That was amazing! Oh, did I kill that fi I'm sorry, fish. It was an accident. I didn't mean to. What is this? A ship upgrade. 
An engine upgrade, it is passive. This lets you travel faster. This engine is actually of an older model than the already equipped one. It is faster though. So my guess would be, I don't feel that much faster. Let's check these walls real quick over here. They're obscured by seaweed and random coral structures, so I'm thinking we might be able to get some goodies out of here. So was it, that's just going to spit me out that way. Oh, look at that. My engine's actually, so does it accelerate with time maybe? Or is it just makes me strong enough to go against the current? That's very, very interesting because before I thought that you beat these currents by using the, by using the dash. And it's interesting that you can use two separate utilities to actually nullify the currents. That's really, really cool. Huh. See, it just goes to show you there are multiple ways to play this game. I played it in a completely different order last time. I didn't get the up to, I didn't get the engine upgrade at all because I thought that was a dead end up there until I got to another part. That makes me wonder if where the other stones were, there was also explosives over there and I just didn't see them. I kind of want to go back and look, but it's a long trip. What's in here? An oil derrick. I've always felt that humanity, that should be our symbol all in all. Our symbol should be an oil derrick. I think people will come up with other things like a fist or something like that, you know, or like an eyeball or you know, just our insignia. But an oil derrick, I think, really, really sort of signifies us as a species, like in a never-ending quest to be more comfortable than we already are, even when we're comfortable enough. I think that one's saying the same as one that we've already seen. If you want to get in between these, what I like to do, I used to do this back on the Nintendo too, is when they leave a trail like that, it makes triangles and it makes different polygons and you can see them for just a moment, little geometrical figures. And if you get inside those geometrical figures, he said, as he got shot, you should be good. The other way that you could conceivably do it is just by shooting the little bastards, I guess. It depends how violent you are. I tend to just sneak my way through because I don't really think about it that much. What's up here? Is that a submarine? What is that right there? I don't even know what that is. It's inside of here. Oh, an upgrade, cool. We got a harpoon charge speed upgrade, so that's nice. We can actually charge this thing up pretty quickly now. It's like we're getting better. Got to with me, we're getting better. Getting better all the time. We are fighting for our species, for the good of all life on Earth, ecology through life. So this must be, actually this has a three on it right there, so that must be district three maybe. These might be like the herbarium workers or something along that I I don't really know it seems like each area is designated to do a different task like there seems to be definite like engineering areas and there seems to be like ecology areas seems to be living areas I'll probably just shoot my way through seems to be more efficient than doing it the hard way like I was I don't suppose there's anything over here oh there's a destroyable wall my guess is that maybe you get torpedoes or something later on that allow you to break some of these walls Let's go ahead and this guy's going to fire at it. I'm just going to ski through. I have no idea what that spider right there does. It looks like he's immune to harpoons, though, so we'll probably have to come back and get him with something else, maybe. I don't know. Looks a little tougher than I, though. What's to the south? If the parasite is to the south, I don't think we can take the parasite yet. Okay, so it's not the parasite. There's a boss in here. There's like three bosses in this zone, four bosses, maybe. And each one does something different. Defeating them in sequence is definitely easier than defeating them out of sequence. I've beaten one of them out of sequence, and it was pretty difficult. It took it took some doing. So where did this let me get to? Oh, this just took me to the opposite side. Okay, so that's where we thought that's where we fought the seahorses at. So our next boss has got to be over here somewhere. It's just hard to tell where. He's either in the depths. Or it's possible... I don't think he's off to the east. It says a lamp is advised. Oh, we've got an upgrade down here. A harpoon charge speed upgrade. Well, hell. Charging that thing up with a quickness now. We're actually getting pretty solid range out of it if we get our hold down on our clicker. This game is very, very simple in that regard, though. Those things are all over the place. Evolution-wise, is that an underwater apatosaurus? What happens if I shoot it? It just doesn't give a damn. So what are those going to do for me? Okay, watch out for the boulders. They hurt you. I forgot to bring that up. The boulders deal damage. So you Oh, you got to do that one from below. I wonder if that opens it up permanently or every time I come through the zone, I've got to redo that. We've got what looks like a crashed ship right there. 
will do what's necessary. They call us terrorists when we want to protect human life on Earth. When we protest against the mass killings and destruction of anything environmentally unfriendly, we only want to protect. Something tells me that any action that's offensive is not really protecting. I don't know, I draw a line right there. Can't be just like killing people because they disagree with you. You know that, the whole fabric of our entire system starts falling apart. It's just too much. Looks like we might be able to accomplish something down... Oh, it looks like there's a clipping plane. Okay, I never knew that. We can go down that way, it looks like. I don't think we want to, though. I don't think we can saw the chains on the mines. Yeah, we can't saw the chains on the mines. Let's get back up here. It does look like we have an eastward option. Although, if this takes us to the Tranquil... We don't want to mess with the Tranquil. Yeah, it does. These little these little octopi right here, they're the Tranquil's babies. We don't want to fight the Tranquil yet. We don't have the right equipment to fight the Tranquil. Let's go back to Pipe City. I think there's something in Pipe City that will be useful to us. And so I think heading west is going to be our best plan for right now. If there's a save point that allows me to teleport, I would take it, but I don't see it around here. We're doing really, really strongly, and there's going to be things that I miss because I haven't played the game a ton. This is going to be one of those games for a long, long time into the future. People are going to be posting secrets and spoilers and kind of like strategies and stuff like that. Oh, we got an upgrade down here. Hey, it gave us a little bit more hull. Good. We could always use some more hull. Hull is a fantastic upgrade. I'll take it. But anyways, as I was saying, this is one of those games that I feel like people well into the future are going to be printing guides and like maps and like secrets and all kinds of stuff for it that other people just aren't going to know about because the breadth of random things hidden in this game is pretty large. Like there's a lot of stuff in this game that you can potentially just walk right on by and never see it. Like the engine. I didn't get the engine the last time I played through. I had no idea that it even existed. A little engine apparatus. I think Pipe City was down this one right here. Looks kind of straight. Let's go ahead and save though. So that we've got ourselves taken care of. You don't have to save right there. It saves, I think, every single time. Let's see what this says. Construction in District 6 and 7 has been started. New building designs from Legendary Architect. Construction. Okay, so they received new designs from a Legendary Architect. And construction has begun in District 6 and 7. We'll check out the stuff in that zone over there in just a minute. But Pipe Central, I know for a fact that we had things that we could do here now that we have the buzz saw and so that was covered by stones over there we can't get through there and those stones were arranged vertically which means you can't cut any mines to get after them I don't know maybe we go down this way no we can't get through there yet what about just gotta find the right path that's all so there we go this path looks like it might be one that we might be able to make use of up this way, we got another upgrade right there. Harpoon charge speed increase. That loops back to where we've already been. Man, our harpoon is charging super fast now. That's really, really not. Oh, shit. We almost got took out right there. I was moving fast. I was moving fast and almost got punished. We'll check the false wall over there in just a minute. Yeah, this seems familiar. I think this is where we want to be next. What is this? Is it just like a joint? Like an elbow joint? Is there one over here? No. What is that? Huh. I love the exploration in this game. I always love games that reward you for exploring and for sitting in a room for a little while and just like fiddling around with stuff and they'd be like, look, you found a secret. Like, I love that. That's a facet of gameplay that I very much miss from the old days. And games like this and Binding of Isaac and, you know, there's, there's a lot of games out there that are just what they are. They're very linear. There's not a lot of extra stuff. Oh, we got Pipe Central Station. Cool. There's not a lot of extra stuff around. It's just kind of you get what is on the box. I like it when developers go the extra mile and they just keep adding random stuff that they enjoyed from back in the day. So it looks like we can't really get in there. We've got a Geiger counter sound going off. It's got me a little bit nervous. I don't know if... This place is a little bit labyrinthine, unfortunately. Looks like we can get through here. BEA protest. BEA attacks continue as a protest from fighting against the slaughter of the last cows to slaughtering the creation of a new GMO species. Will the BEA terrorists never be satisfied? Yeah, I don't agree with killing people just because they're working on projects you don't agree with and stuff like that. You gotta learn how to bring shit civilly, and if you can't do that, then... Uh, this pink shit back in here I think is bad. I don't think we want to be here. This leads to the Parasite, and I don't think we can take the Parasite yet. I like to have the shield before I fight the Parasite. The Parasite's gnarly. That's what this pink shit is over here. It is the Parasite. 
And so I should have known the second I started seeing it. That boss down there, probably one of the harder bosses I've fought so far in the game. And he is, wait, it looked like there was a, like maybe hidden behind that pipe. Uh, I don't think there's, I think we gotta go through, okay. That's not gonna be what we want. Instead, maybe go to the left. That's blocked off as well. Maybe we'll go up and left and around on the map. See if we can get after the forgotten one is normally who I like to do next. I mean, I've only done the game once. I say normally, but I need, he gives us, I think he gives us the dash attack and the dash attack is really useful. Got a couple of brain corals in here, cool stuff. I love underwater ecology and like underwater biology, marine biology. Yeah, this is where we wanna be. I know where we are. We're in the right spot. I think there might be a box down here somewhere though, or like a false wall. I don't recall exactly, but there's a reason your radar goes out down here. And I think it's because there's something that you desire. Yeah, it's right there behind that. Is genetically modified fish bad for you tonight? We'll discuss it with leading experts from the facility. So it looks like we just had a little bit of an insight right here. I think we have time. If I can get... Oh, shit. I wasn't paying attention. See how much faster our hull repairs just after one upgrade? I think there's multiple hull repair upgrades, too, and it gets to the point where you start repairing really, really quickly after a while. This is the next boss, and I think this is the forgotten one over here. He's an interesting boss. He's not difficult, I don't think. In fact, I think he's probably one of the gimme bosses, in my opinion. However, you need a gimme boss every now and again. That's how you keep the player engaged. If every single boss is just a hell-raising, miserable experience, it tends to scare casual players off. You gotta give them something to strive for. Let's have a look around here. I'm of the opinion, I like it when games are linear. They get difficult kind of on an even slope. This game, it goes back and forth because you can fight bosses at any time that you want to fight them. And so it's possible that you can get yourself into some real... That's a big skull. That's a real big skull. There he is. I forgot where he was at, but ow, that was painful. So the forgotten one. Ah! You want to give him range. That's my recommendation for fighting the forgotten one. If you can just like stay the hell away from him, that's the best thing for everybody. And so I would use your harpoon at like its maximum range. Otherwise, he's going to get you with his charge attack every time he comes after you. I would like a damage buff at some point. He's going to switch phases a couple of times. Oh, shit. That was just kind of bad luck right there, wasn't it? We had that little fart cloud right next to where we are. So his fight basically follows this format. He follows you, he puts fart clouds out. If you go through the fart clouds, what happened to us happens to you. In between putting out the fart clouds, he's going to launch claws that block your shots. And then after he's launched the claws, he's going to do the double charge attack. After he does the double charge attack, once his health is low enough, he's going to suck in water. And when he sucks in water, he will either eat you and kill you, or he'll suck in all those little claws and you've got to dodge those while he's trying to suck you in. This is once again one of those reasons why I recommended you should give him a lot of range. Unfortunately, I did not follow my own advice. You can actually start hitting him too really, really early, so I would recommend doing that. And so what I would do is I would take him all the way down to the edge here. I would get up above him because I'm so high, yeah, high, high above him. He's so lame, yeah. And if you can stay far away from his little suckiness right there, you'll do a lot better. Oh, he's getting us with the charge. The engines are going to help out. The last time I killed this guy, I didn't have the engines, so... I assume the game is balanced for play without the engines, since they can be missed. I don't know. He's doing the sucky thing. You see how he's sucking in the claws or the teeth or whatever it is that's falling in? You gotta, you gotta hit him, though. He gets health back when he eats him. Which is really kind of unfortunate. For me, definitely. Above all. Watch out for his stink clouds, by the way. Oh man, he's gonna get a bunch of health back the next time he sucks in. I don't think if you... I don't know if you can actually stop the suck mechanic. Ooh. Man. After I said he's the gimme boss, this is my fault. I shouldn't have said that. I done jinxed myself. I beat him on my first try, too. It's something about being on camera that messes me up. I, that's just like 100% what it is. Something about doing commentary just makes me bad at the game. What I should do is I should just do post-commentary during all the bosses. Because then we'd be a lot more efficient here. Alright. Triple charge attack right there. Puts us in okay shape. They continue to fight him from a range. Oh, there he is again. 
Where is he at? Right. Oh, no. We almost went through one of his little farty clouds. Come on, big guy. Oh, he spawned one right on top of us right there. Let's give it a minute. And we need to... We need to get some health back. I'm going to stay away from him for a bit. If I can. Yeah, that'll do. We're getting a little bit of health back now. What you can do is during the sucky phase, sometimes you can get in behind him. And it'll give you an opportunity to get a bunch of hits off just like that. Or get hit. Ooh, that was a close one. Bad things almost happened to us. His last phase isn't so bad either. Just kind of watch out for the farty clouds and you should be good. He's also leaking something out of that large phallic. Oh, it's his guts. Never mind. I thought it was his wiener. His fish wang hanging out. Sometimes you got to hang brain. It is what it is. I think more than anything else, yeah, he heals whenever he eats one of his own teeth. How convenient is that? He produces the thing that he needs to ingest in order to live. Wild. Oh, he's gone into his final phase now. So he's going to turn in. What's going to happen? He's going to turn into a skeleton. When he turns into a skeleton, little gas cloud's going to come out. And then it's going to chase you around while spreading more little gas clouds. Then you're going to do a repeat phase of what you've already seen. Oh, what did I get killed by? I'm not sure what killed me right there. I have no idea because he wasn't touching me. He knocked me to the side, but I didn't see any clams or anything that were going to kill me. I don't know. Let's get it done. We got this thing covered. It's all good. What I should do is edit out as many. Oh, man. He's on me right there. I'm going to make him pay for it, though. I'm going to make him pay for it if he wants to get them big attacks off. He's going to have to figure it out. Should be able to finish him off pretty easily. Just kind of having a rough time with it, I guess. This is what I get for calling a boss a gimme fight. This is what I get. This is my punishment forever on the internet. Eh. He's gonna suck in a bunch of teeth over there. Oh, he's inside the wall? That's unfortunate. Oh man, you got a bunch of health back. There we go. We got him back into the gas phase. It'll be maybe I got sucked into one of his teeth or something. I don't really know how he damaged me right there. Oof. I have to go back in between on that side. He's gonna go back to where he came from. And I think we should get to safety. Some of these areas are looking a little iffy to me. He'll go back into gas phase in just a second, but not trying to get murdered right now. Really am not inspired to become a corpse anytime soon. Uh, I keep trying to use the dash charge because I'm used to it. I'm used to having the dash and I just, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like he like kind of recuperates off filth, misery, and destruction here. I think he's healing faster than I can get him. Like kind of a bad thing for us. Definitely not a good thing. Good things would be like cupcakes, ice cream, all those sorts of fun stuff. I'm staying the hell over here. I'm, the last time I went over there, he murdered me. I don't feel like it. Nope, not me. Not today. Okay, so we're back inside gas mode. I swear to God, we've got this. This is not a hard fight. I don't know why I'm screwing it up so much. I'm going to try and get on this side of him when he comes back. Oh, unless he does that. That'll be bad. I think I could take him. Come on. Just a little bit more gas in the tank. And we got him. The Forgotten One is defeated, spreading his miasma all over the place. Let's collect our loot, shall we? And so now we've got the Jet Thruster, which is a really cool piece of equipment. It allows us to get past those pipes we've been seeing the whole game that block us from getting treasure and other fun stuff. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of the Aquatic Adventures of the Last Human. I always pluralize that because it feels like it should be a pluralized to me because it seems like more than one adventure 
just if I was gonna this seems like more than one adventure I think we've well crossed the threshold on one adventure I'll see y'all next time don't know how many episodes I'm gonna make I do like this game a lot seriously this is a really really fantastic game it's one of those indie games that I can point to emphatically when somebody's like what's good this year this one the aquatic adventures of the last human I'll see y'all next time bye everybody